This is Good Friday, and we continue the service. Glad to have you here as we remember why Jesus died for us, and by his wounds we are healed as we continue these themes. We appreciate the Altar Guild for helping get the altar set for the various nights a little ahead of time so we could be recording these and getting them posted on time. Let me show you uh, and remind you of what Good Friday looks like while you listen to Joanne once again singing, Were You There? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Pause the video and meditate on the opening verses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain when you make his life an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Christ was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his wounds we are healed. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have broken your commandments by our own thoughts, words, and deeds. We have deserved the penalty of death and condemnation for turning our backs on you. We have not loved our brothers and sisters as we ought, and we have not cared for your creation. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and give us the healing power of your love that we may walk again in your ways and live to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God is gracious and merciful, and he desires that we be made free of the burden of our sins. Through Jesus Christ, who bore the cross for our sake and for the sake of the whole world, there is healing, hope, and life. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pause the video and ponder the declaration of grace in these verses. The Old Testament reading takes us back to Genesis chapter 3, picking it up right after Adam and Eve had uh, eaten the, the forbidden fruit thinking that they knew more than the word of God. And here are the consequences. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and eat dust, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground, because of you, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it 
you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 6. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you've been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 19th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. And this was to fulfill what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Now after this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Pause the video to reflect on the message verses. Dear friends, as I record this, I'm the only one in the sanctuary, the only one here in church, and there's a loneliness to this. During this virus event, one of the feelings most people are experiencing is a feeling of loneliness to some degree, it's such a big change from all the people that you had been around just a few weeks ago, and now you're perhaps removed from them personally. I mean, you miss your church friends, you miss your work friends, you miss your school friends, and um, loneliness can be frustrating and give you kind of a hollow feeling inside. Now, imagine the feeling you would get if in addition to that, God was not with you either. That would be true loneliness. You know, Jesus was alone on the cross. The disciples had scattered. His friends had scattered. The people there mocking him, covered in our sin, even God turned his face away from Jesus. And he was alone. On the cross, his wounds are fully and publicly displayed in his hands, his feet, his pierced side. His wounds are visible in the crown of thorns he wears upon his head. He struggles for breath. His, he thirsts his prayers and cries out to the Father in his last words of committing himself into the Father's hand and then gives up his spirit and bows his head in death. Death is the last 
wound for Jesus. It will be the last wound for us as well who have followed him to the cross through this series, reminding us by his wounds we are healed. Indeed, St. Paul would call death the last enemy, an enemy that would seem to win the battle here on this Good Friday. But were it not for those powerful words that Jesus spoke from the cross, it is finished. Those words are not spoken in defeat, but as words of a victory that has been achieved for us all. Death is a fitting judgment for our wrongs. We hear the judgment again, as we did on Ash Wednesday. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. We know that we've been slaves to sin and that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus speaks no words of condemnation to us from the cross. His desire is that we see his sacrifice as a sacrifice of love. And by his love, we grow in his admonition of yesterday, of Monday, Thursday, to, to love one another. By his wounds, we are healed. We are brought from the brink of condemnation into the joys of being united with him, with all who are part of his community of faith. Even though we're not together physically, we are together in faith, connected in the body of Christ. I am baptized, Martin Luther would say, in moments of dis deepest despair. And if I am baptized, I have the promise that I shall be saved and have eternal life, both in soul and body, he would say. So once again, we are reminded that I am baptized. So when you're feeling lonely, or feel that loneliness of this virus uh, pandemic fill in, pause and say, I am baptized. By faith, we no longer feel loneliness because the resurrected Jesus promises to never leave you or forsake you. This is what makes Good Friday good. It's not that Jesus is so deeply wounded upon the cross as he was throughout his life and ministry. It's good because it has been made good by Jesus. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. In the prayers this evening, the bidding prayer is used traditionally on Good Friday. And there are gaps between when you hear Gordon Poley's voice and my voice, and that's for you to silently insert your own petitions before the Lord, and then I'll complete the topic afterwards. There's no benediction or closing verses in this service, and we'll complete this gathering on Resurrection Sunday. Let us pray for the whole Christian church that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy so that your church spread throughout all nations may be defended against the adversary and may serve you in true faith and persevere in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray for our catechumens, that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ. Jesus, our Lord, almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that rejoicing in their new birth by water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for Christians. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially our President, President Trump, the Congress of the United States, Mike DeWine, our governor, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our Lord God Almighty that he would deliver the world from all error take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak May the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and loving God and his only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and gather them into his family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death, but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you. Free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord that we may serve you in true fear to the praise and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God would, rem would remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O almighty everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you've commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious invitation and visitation, all our enemies may be led to true repentance 
and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth, that God would send down his blessing upon them and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them according to his own good will. O oh Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may by your word, by your grace, be made ready to receive your blessing on all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 